What's up everyone, it's Lens Addict here and today I just purchased Enhanced Autopilot and I'm in Australia so I'm going to try out all the Enhanced Autopilot features and show you guys what it's like and how it performs and if it's actually worth $5,000 um, and if it's not worth it I will be refunding it and I'll show you what the refund process looks like as well. So let's get started and we'll start off with just the normal summon. So we got the app here, and we're gonna hold down on the backwards button and see if the car will move. Looks like it's gonna move. And that's what someone looks like. It's a bit nerve wracking having the car do this on its own. But it seems to be doing an okay job, no. Oh, oh God, did you see that? It went so close to the wall. I don't like that at all. Let's test summon again, but this time we'll do it going forward. So we're gonna say go forward. So it seems to do a less stressful job going forward, I would say. Oh, and let's see how close it goes. That's it. So this is what it did, the job of parking. It looks like it did a pretty good job, actually. Yeah. And let's try reverse one more time see if it does better this time. So we're holding down the reverse, it says preparing, and someone failed. All right, let's try it again. One more time. So, so far this is quite buggy. Um, so this is what reversing looks like in summon. Looks like it does okay this time. And let's see how far back we can get it to go. Still going. And that's it, won't go any further. Probably smart because that's where the road is. So I hope you enjoyed that look at Summon. So now we're gonna move on to Smart Summon, the one where it can navigate around on its own and steer through a car park. So let's go to a car park nearby and we'll try out Smart Summon and see how we go. Now we've got the car parked over here and we've got the app open and we're gonna go to Target. And let's see what happens. So it looks like the car's moving on its own. Seems to understand that the car park, you can't go over those lines, so it's quite smart about that. Now it's taking the corner. And... Seems to... So yeah, made it to the target. Actually did a good job. It's impressive. Whoa. Very aggressive stop though. So we're gonna try again. This time we're gonna say go back to that corner. Let's see what it does. So it's probably gonna reverse. Yep. And actually I'm curious what happens if I walk in front of the car. Let me try that. So we're gonna see what happens if we just run in front of it. Are you ready? 
Oh, it slams on the brakes and goes backwards. <laughs> uh, it says stopping. All right, that was pretty smart. Let me see if we can get it to try and do it again. No, I don't think it will do it anymore. It's given up. Let's see if it'll do it this time. Oh, it's going for another round. So this time... It's driving on its own. It's going pretty quick. Taking the corner. Oh, it's cutting the... Oh, slammed on the brakes. So it's a bit herky-jerky, but... It seems to work. Pretty cool feature, actually. And it looks like it's found its way where it was told to go. And now it's reversing. And let's try again. So interesting, it does say waiting for pedestrian on the screen. And if I move over, I wonder if it'll keep following me around using GPS. I think it does. So in theory, you could just get it to keep chasing you all day. All right. Let's see what happens if we run out of it again. Oh, it seems to reverse backwards once it realizes there's a pedestrian nearby. I've not seen that behavior in other types of Tesla driving. Looks like it's gonna ignore the lines this time. So this time we got Smart Summon in a little car park and we'll see if it can navigate through this gap here so i'm gonna say come to me and it says cannot use on public roads uh, but i don't think this is a public road so that's a bit sad let's try it one more time unfortunately nothing cannot use on public roads so that is as far as it's going to go. Can't test it in this car park. Let's try a different car park. So we're going to try summon again, this time in a car park with other cars around. And let's see how it does. Looks like it's doing okay. Seems to kind of ignore the lines, though, of what you should be doing. <laughs> like, it's not very human-like, but it does seem to work in a car park. But to be honest, 
This is too nerve-wracking to use in a public car park because I just don't trust it enough. Let's see what happens if we walk in front of it again. Oh, nothing. Doesn't slow down. Poor form. So we're going to walk out in front of it and it looks like you can see but will it see me again if I walk in front of it again? Oh, nothing. Pretty bad. I don't know how I feel about that. That's pretty bad behaviour. So next up we're going to try the vision based auto parking. So supposedly this allows you to park while, or like most auto parking systems you need other cars either side of the car. But supposedly this system just works based on looking at the lines in a car park. But I would argue that if you don't have any cars either side, right? You probably don't need auto parking. You can probably just use just park normally like if it's an empty car park it should be easy and the times that you would need auto park is when you have cars either side and it's actually hard to park but that's besides the point let's try out the auto parking uh, in a very empty car park so we can try out lots of different scenarios so we're just gonna start out driving around and let's see we has got some car parks on the left well, sorry, that's the wrong way around. The left and the right. So, looks like we've got a P here, so we'll press the P. Oh, it looks identified a parking spot. So we'll shift into reverse, and then we tap start, and then it looks like it just parks. So we'll just watch the screen. And... Yeah, you can see a visualization. Well, a very aggressive stop. Thank you. 
it says auto park complete. So let's have a look at how that auto park was. Was it a good park or a bad park? So it's kind of a bad park. It's not terrible, but I could probably do better myself, especially this. Ignore all these birds, they're a bit loud. I do apologize, but yeah, that's not a very good park considering like that's pretty much on the line, right? I don't know if I'd be happy with this park. Let's give it another shot. Let's try another time. Let's give it another go. So we've got a P again. I think the side, I think the thing here indicates what side it's on. Yeah, it does. So we'll probably put reverse again and we'll tap start. And it moves the indicator to the other side. Keeps reversing. Wonder if it'll do a better job this time. Wow, nailed this park one go. That's nice. No reversing and forward. So let's check out what this park looks like again from the outside. So I would say that this time it did a better job. Looks like it's um, within the lines pretty well. Um, yeah, looks good. Nice. Okay, so now we've tested out auto park uh, for reverse parking, but let's try in a park, car park with other cars around, like a more real life test. So we're gonna go to a different car park and we're gonna try out auto park again and see what it's like. So we're gonna try the reverse parallel parking this time. So here's a car to the left and we're pulling up. Still no P on the screen. There's a P, so we'll tap it. Shift to reverse. Tap start. And let's see how we go. So it seems pretty confident. Pretty quick. And it's getting very close to that curb. I can see it in the mirror. Very close. Um, but didn't hit it. We'll hop out after it's finished parking and we'll have a look. Nice how it automatically puts park on. So let's have a look. So pretty good distance from the car in front. Not too bad on the curb actually, it's very close, but it's actually a pretty good park. Yeah, nice. The reverse parallel parking works too. Nice. So this time we're going to try the reverse parking um, into one of these spots. So once we see a P, we're going to press it. And we see a P. So I don't think that's the spot we want. I think that's the spot behind. No, so we're going to go forward a bit more. And let's go for the next one. Because we want to park it in between two cars. It's a better test. So we see the P, shifting to reverse, tapping start, and let's see how we go. It's a shame that it didn't go forward a little bit more because if it did, it could have done that one go. That's all right. It's nice how it auto shifts into um, drive and reverse. And there we go, it's reversing. Quite speedy, pretty good. And once again, we'll hop out and uh, check that park. Looks like it's done pretty good. Let's have a look. So it's parked within the lines quite well. In fact, I would argue that it used the lines and not the other cars for this park. And yeah, it's pretty good park right in right in the spot as it should be nice so it looks like the auto parking works reasonably well um, I was unable to get it to work too well when there were like two cars um, on the side of the street and it was like a very tight gap and it just wouldn't attempt those kind of parks unfortunately whereas some of the systems that aren't vision based that I've used like in Holden Astra um, it would go for like some of the tightest parks ever. 
I can put in an example of what this might look like and the auto park did it. So that might give you an idea. And that's when I really did value the auto park. Uh, whereas the Tesla one seems to go for more easy to park situations. Um, yeah. So this is an example of the Holden Astra auto park. As you can see, it's a really tight spot and the Tesla auto park wouldn't even try. So next up, we got the auto lane change. So we'll see what that looks like from inside the car as it's probably not very exciting from the outside of the car. And yeah, let's have a look at that. The auto lane change. Unfortunately, um, as I'm in a regional area, Navigate on Autopilot just refused to work. So I pretty much couldn't test it out. I drove about 100 k's north and 100 k's south, and I didn't come across any roads that Navigate on Autopilot would work on. So uh, if you live in like a regional area, Navigate on Autopilot isn't so good. But if I come across uh, a road where it wants to work on, I will give it a try. I've seen videos of it, it appears to work well. Really hope you enjoyed this test of the enhanced autopilot features on the Tesla Model 3. I My opinion on these features are that they are not worth $5,000. They're really cool to see, but uh, like Smart Summon is really cool to see, but it's also very nerve wracking. And there's lots of videos on YouTube of it going wrong and damaging cars. Um, so... Don't know how I feel about it. Same with Summon, like it kind of works, but it also is nerve wracking because it gets really close to the wall. And yeah, I don't know if I'd recommend it. So I'm going to be refunding the this purchase of Enhanced Auto Palette, and I'm going to show you how that works in this video here, which will be online soon. See you all in the next video. Lens Addict out.